happy. Oh, hello, boys and girls. I'm going to play football. Yeah, come on, let's go. No, Steve, stop. You have to tidy your room. Not now, Maggie. I'm going to play football and I don't want to be late. Ah. Hey, what time is it? <laughs> oh, oh, it's hot, it's hot, oh, no. it's hot. Oh, oh, no, look at my T-shirt. Oh, I need a new uh -oh. T-shirt now. <laughs> Steve's red T-shirts are everywhere. Let's have some fun with our little Maggie magic. Hello everyone. Today we're doing uh, my favorite 10 albums from 1973. Steve Carlson has already done 74 and Richie finally did his 73 uh, list. And so now I'm the one behind. Although uh, Cosmic Brian has uh, been doing this too. He's been jumping in and doing this too. So uh, I'm gonna try and catch up here um, soon, sooner than later. Um, let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room, um, uh, or address the elephant in the room. <laughs> let's just shove the elephant out of the room. Let's not address it. Let's just shove it out of the room. <laughs> Here's the, uh, Inner Visions by Stevie Wonder. Not in my top 10 for 1973. And I know that that is, um, probably crazy to some that are big Stevie Wonder fans. I love Stevie Wonder as much as the next person that has a um, an affinity for R&B music. Uh, I'll just be honest, for me, the ballads on Inner Visions are not my favorite. I much prefer the softer, sweeter songs on Talking Book and uh, Songs in the Key of Life. Um, now, the funkier side of this album is incredible. And, and probably some of his best work. But I just, I don't know, the, the ballads, I'm just not as much of a fan on uh, that album. All right. Number 10. Brothers and Sisters by the Allman Brothers. This is the first uh, full studio uh, album uh, after Dwayne Allman's death. And for many years, I kind of wanted to discount this album because of that. It was just hard for me to be like, well, that's, you know, Dwayne's not on that, you know? And eventually I just couldn't, couldn't continue that train of thought. I just had to accept it for what it is. And it's an absolutely fantastic album. And there's some great songs on here by Greg Allman and Dickie Betts it is a master on this record. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just, I think it's, I think it's just a strong set of songs, you know, Wasted Words, Rambling Man, Southbound, Jessica. Yeah. I just think this, this is, this is an absolutely incredible record. Uh, my second favorite Allman Brothers studio album uh, behind Out of Wild South. Number nine. So this is another one that I don't think is underrated. I just, I don't think people talk about it as much as they talk about two of his other albums, and they should. And it's Fresh by um, Sly and the Family Stone. <laughs> I, not, not as, not as dark as there's a riot going on, not as moody as as um there's a riot going on it's almost it almost strikes the perfect balance between an album like stand and there's a riot going on i would say his focus on this record was not as as strong when it comes to the song writing it but it has such a loose feel it just seems like a lot of just kind of like jamming in the studio and then they just kind of developed songs out of that. I, I haven't really read into the history of the recording of this record, but it just feels like an album that, that, that came together by just kind of jamming in the studio. And it's funky. It's funky. 
um, and uh, the his version of Kesara Sara is out of this world. I mean, I first heard it on that anthology when I bought that as a, on a CD years ago. I was probably still in high school. Of course, if you want me to stay, is one of his best songs ever. Um, but in in time, thankful and thoughtful. Um, Babies making babies, you know, so there's still some societal commentary on it, but I wouldn't have a problem if anybody said that this was their favorite Sly and the Family Stone record. At number eight, I have Aladdin Sane by David Bowie. And uh, Ziggy Stardust being the first David Bowie album that I ever listened to, I went straight to Aladdin Sane after that. And the first time I heard Aladdin Sane, I think I even liked it more than I liked Ziggy Stardust. I just, I, I love the, the kind of variety in it, but this is an, outsta an outstanding album. It's impossible to rank, for me to rank his discography. So I, I can't say like where this lies, like in my favorites of, of Bowie's, but I just, I just absolutely love it. I will say Time is definitely in my top 10 favorite Bowie songs of all time. Uh, it might even be top five. I love that song. Time is amazing. But then, you know, Panic in Detroit, uh, the title track, the Gene Genie. I mean, it's just, it's a great, it's such a great record, you know? He just kind of continues the sound of Ziggy Stardust, but it, do, it does not feel recycled. And that's what's so great about it. So number seven, I have Sweet Revenge by John Prine. Uh, the first three John Prine albums are all absolute classics in my book. The first one, the debut, the self-titled, uh, being my favorite, that is a true masterpiece. But Diamonds in the Rough uh, and Sweet Revenge are both excellent albums with just another incredible group of, of songs by one of the best songwriters ever lived. Uh, right out of the gate with Sweet Revenge, the title track, you just get a different kind of uh, rock and roll feel uh, with like a chorus of singers in the background. Grandpa is, was a carpenter which has a lot of heart to it. Then a song like Dear Abby, which is a live recording on here, which is hilarious. Um, and then, you know, uh, Please Don't Bury Me uh, often is a word I seldom use. I mean, he just, he's so great at turning on a switch. And you can go in either either way. It doesn't matter, you know. He can, he's He's got an incredible sense of humor. And then the next second, just incredible depth. And expression of emotion. I, I just think that's 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 what makes him such a fantastic songwriter and why he's one of my favorites. Okay, at number uh, six, I have Future Days by Can. Now, this is an album that I will admit I have probably, I heard for the first time probably five years ago. Now, I uh, had listened to Tago Mago and Egabamiyasa for a lot longer. Um, and I just, I don't know why I hadn't continued my exploration of Can like beyond those, those two albums, um, until like within the last five years. And I finally just picked up a physical copy of this at the end of last year. Um, but I've streamed it a lot and I can confidently say now that it's my second favorite Can album. Uh, the last one with Damon Suzuki. But I just absolutely love um, how it's so very serene and kind of calm and ambient at times, which is not at all what you get on uh, Egabamiyasi or, um, or Tagamago. It's just, um, it's a new kind of sound and I love it. Um, and you would get it in, in some of the, the albums after. Uh, but it also has some real grooves on it too, you know? Um, so it's kind of a, a perfect middle ground in a way. And number five, I have Paris 1919 by John Cale. Uh, obviously first introduced to John Cale through the Velvet Underground, um, but didn't really dive into his solo work until I heard uh, Yolo Tango's cover of Andalusia. Um... Andalusia. Sorry, kind of gave you the southern pronunciation first, um, but 
This is just an absolute classic. It's probably the closest thing he ever gets to pure pop, this album. And, and even saying pure pop is completely unfair because it's an artistic masterpiece. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Paris 19, John Cale. At number four, I have For Your Pleasure by Roxy Music. This is easily my favorite Roxy Music album. It's not hard for me to differentiate um, that claim. I, uh, I just absolutely love all aspects of this band on this record. The, uh, the dark moodiness of this record, the cover art matches it perfectly. The uh, experimentation of Brian Eno, uh, the guitar playing, Phil Manzanera is a, just uh, incredible. Um, and Brian Ferry's uh, delivery and personality. This album grooves. It also gets very sullen at times. Um, and, and I love that about it. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not a party, you know, all the way through. I don't know. I just, uh, for me, For Your Pleasure was as good as it gets for Roxy Music. Um, and I don't think uh, at this point in my life I'll, that'll, ever, that'll ever be some, a thing that changes. Um, now, something that does change is that this was in my top 200 album, favorite albums of all time. It, it would still be in my top 200 albums of all time. Uh, but this album uh, wasn't. And yet, I'm still putting it at number three ahead of it because we're purely talking about 1973. And uh, this album didn't make my top 200 because I tried not to repeat too many artists when I was doing that. But I can't ignore how much of a masterpiece this album was and how important it was in 1973. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd at number three. Everybody knows how great this album is. Um, everybody probably remembers the first time they heard it, um, what they were doing, what they were under the influence of, uh, whether or not they were watching Wizard of Oz. Uh, I wasn't, thank goodness. At number two, Headhunters, Herbie Hancock. Um, so we kind of come a little bit full circle I uh, talked about Sly Stone earlier with Fresh, and this album, uh, hugely influenced by Sly Stone. Um, and a lot of other artists that were writing music like that. I mean, there's the song Sly, you know? Uh, but Herbie Hancock kind of wanted to make an album that... Uh, could relate to the masses a bit more, I think. And he, he did that. Uh, it still, though, is just as artistic as anything else that he's done in jazz. If you're into anything that sounds like this album, you should have this album in your collection. Uh, it's, you know, it's absolutely impeccable. Some of the best grooves ever. Finally, number one, Raw Power, Iggy and the Stooges. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and I'm not talking about mixes on this, except for the fact to say there is no great mix of this album, okay? Uh, but this is that double set with the Bowie mix and the Iggy mix. And honestly, on vinyl, I said I wasn't going to get into it. <laughs> But I'm going to say it anyway. On vinyl, both mixes sound fine. They really do. And, and this, was a, this was a really well done reissue. But yeah, there's no perfect mix. So, okay, who cares? But that's why it's so fucking great. Is because the songs are so good that it doesn't matter that it's not a great sounding record. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Um, it was foundational for punk music. And um, yeah. I mean, you know, I love I love the the first three Stooges albums, um, but this one is is my favorite by far. Enough repetitious adjectives and uh, BS. So uh, again, 
I will get 1974 done sooner than later. It's just been hard making videos lately uh, since uh, my office has returned uh, to work every day. It's been really hard. When I was working from home, I could just, at any time, I could just stop and record a video. <laughs> um, that's okay. I'm still watching everybody and commenting or, I'm watching some people and commenting. Uh, so anyway, hope everybody's doing well. We'll talk to you uh, later on. Now can I wear a red t-shirt and go and play football? Okay, abracadabra! <laughs> Great! <laughs> I'm wearing a red t-shirt yeah. and I'm going ho -ho, to play football. <laughs> See ya! Oh, hey, Steve! Don't forget your snack! Oh yeah, great! Hey, what time oh. is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Digital gramophone makes no sense.